Okay, here we are ready to go. Testing one, two, three. All right, chapter 13 is the next step in complexity and builds upon chapters 11 and 12 about t-test. The t-test, if you recall, was either a test between independent groups, comparing groups such as genders, or dependent pairs t-test, i.e. the test retest scenario. In chapter 13 and 14, you will see a similar phenomenon, although called by different names, <clears throat> and dealing with more groups, hence the title of this chapter, Two Groups Too Many. In chapter th 13, we'll be looking at the simplest form of analysis of variance called the single factor design. Along the way, we will discover how to use Excel to conduct our analysis of variance for us. Sir Ronald Almer Fisher was a biologist and is the person credited with the creation of the analysis of variance. The analysis of variance was developed to expand upon the t-test. Because each time you run a t-test, the probability of committing a type 1 error increases exponentially with each additional test. <clears throat> yes, our now very familiar path to wisdom. The question you are examining the top question, are you examining relationships between variables or examining the difference, the differences between groups on one or more variables? In this chapter, we will be doing that. Then we will be examining the next statement. I'm examining the differences between groups on one or more variables. Then we'll ask, are the same participants being tested more than once? In this case, the answer will be no. Hold on, though, for Chapter 13 for the test and retest scenario of analysis of variance. How many groups are you dealing with is the next question. Well, if you were just dealing with two groups, it would be back into t-test country. But analysis of variance only deals with more than two groups. And you will notice there is no maximum number of groups. Actually, you can do a analysis of variance on two tests, but you'll get the same results as a t-test. So how many factors are you dealing with is the next question. Now what we're talking about here when we say factors is really how many independent variables are we talking about? Meaning in the case of analysis of variance, the grouping variables act as something like a dependent variable. It's not a dependent variable exactly, but I find it useful to think in that terms. Later, <clears throat> and later on when we get to the chapter on regressions, you'll find that there's no real mathematical differences between an ANOVA and a regression. <clears throat> the differences is in how the problem is conceptualized or formulated. But when we get to regressions, you will see how you can change group membership through the use of dummy coding to predict group membership in a way that is very similar to analysis of the variance. In fact, it is analysis of variance, which is simply a subset of regression. The only re real difference between a simple ANOVA and a t-test <coughs> is the third, the fourth, the fifth group, however many groups there are. <coughs> Both compare means. Both of these tests examine the variance between groups and within groups. A simple or one-way ANOVA is conducted when there is an independent variable that is an interval level, ideally. It could be ordinal in the case of a Likert-type scale. And there is a grouping 
variable. In survey re research, grouping variable might be something like race, where you have white, black, Asian, Native American, etc. And the independent variable is something like number of cigarettes per week or average hours of employment or any score on a depression inventory. When doing an evaluation of an agency, the grouping variable might be location 1, location 2, location 3, etc. And your independent variable, something like percentage of students on free or reduced lunches or scores on global assessments of functioning or some kind of daily functioning index. <clears throat> the factorial design of analysis of variance is more complicated in the sense that it brings in another variable to play. We see in this example our outcome variable is the language development test score. And we can see that we have two types of groups. One group is a group we can manipulate. In that case, the number of hours per week of participation. Group 1 has 5 hours per week. Group 2 has 10. And group 3 has 20 hours per week. With each one of these groups, there is a, another nominal or categorical variable. In this case, we are using gender and conceptualizing it as male and female. In this case, we would be able to see if there's a difference in the two genders depending on the type of group participation they have. Don't let the formula for the F statistic fool you. While it might look simple because it takes up very little space, it is actually fairly complex to think about. So what the F score is, is the mean of squares of variance between the groups, i.e. dogs, cats, horses, and the means of squares of the variance within the groups. For example, the variance for dogs, the variance for cats, and the variance for horses. <coughs> It gets to be a lot to try and program into Excel. Degrees of freedom. If you recall from our discussion of the two different types of t-test, that there was a different way to calculate our degrees of freedom depending on whether it was a paired test, in which case we subtracted one from the number of pairs, or whether it was an independent samples taste, test, in which, in case which we subtracted <coughs> um, um, one from the independent sample. Uh, <coughs> from the total observations in the two samples. So, um, in either case, we set the number in parentheses and lowercase immediately following our test statistic indicator. In the case of the F-score, we need to calculate the degrees of freedom indicator. The first degree of freedom, we, we calculate two degrees of freedom indicators. The first degree of freedom that we calculate is the number of groups for the between group estimate. This is done by counting the number of groups and subtracting one. The within group estimates are populated by taking the total size, um, the total sample size of all groups, and subtracting the number of groups. We can see in this example, because we know that the shorthand of writing degrees of freedom that this analysis of variance is of three groups. There we go. We can see in this example, because we know that the shorthand of writing degrees of freedom, that this analysis of variance is of three groups. We have two there, number number of groups minus one, so 
So we have to add that one back in. That will give us three groups. And that there are um, um, 30 cases. So um, <clears throat> we have 27. And we know we have three groups. So we know that there's 30 total cases. It is not necessary for the groups to be of equal size, although when using Excel, the analysis of variance function sometimes requires to have groups of the uh, same length, i.e. they have the same number of cases, but not for the simple analysis of variance. So this could be a group of uh, three groups of 10. It could be uh, two groups of, of 9 and one group of 12. It could be one group of... Uh, 9, one group of 10, one group of 11. All those would come up with the same um, um, F2, uh, 27 degrees of freedom. And then we would put in our, um, our F obtained value there where the X's are. <clears throat> so, Okay, here's the example from the book, which I encourage you uh, to go through and work out as a form of practice. However, I'm going to demonstrate how to do the simple or single factor analysis of variance. <clears throat> These are different numbers, but there are still three groups. However, you can notice that in group one, that there are only 10 observations compared to groups 2 and 3 in which there are 13. Excel is really nice to us since it looks at these groups and sees that there is blank space and does not include it in the calculation. It's important to remember that in in this instance that blank does not does not equal 0. Sometimes uh, uh, Excel will see a blank as a 0 but not in this case. Okay, on with our plan. You remember the plan. We've, now we've seen this all before. The null hypothesis is the main difference is that there are three groups and what we are saying is the same. So uh, the null hypothesis is, is the mean of group one is equal to the mean of group two is equal to the mean of group three. Now our research hypothesis is very similar again to our other research hypotheses only that there are more groups rather than, than having x bar 1 is not equal to x bar 2 we can see that we have the third x bar and that's really the only difference that, that 1 is not equal to 2 and which is not equal to 3 so that's another way of saying is none of these things are equal to one another. <coughs> Although the way that this is written, potentially uh, x1 and x3 are, x bar 1 and x bar 3 are. In item number 2, we again set our appropriate risk level. And for most beginning social scientists, that's 0.05. Then in item number 3, we select the appropriate stat test statistics. And again, we do that by going back to our decision-making table or decision-making tree and decides which statistical test to do. We compute the test value. <clears throat> and A, B, C under 4 is, is what we do if we, if we were doing our calculations by hand or probing, programming them using Excel or some other spreadsheet. And while it is possible to program a spreadsheet to figure your F scores for you, it becomes a bit of a labor-intensive process to do so. We saw the difference between the types of programming we needed to do for independent samples t-test and the paired samples t-test. The ANOVA is exponentially more complex. So rather than show you how to program it, I will show you how to how I calculated it using the R statistical program and using Excel. In either case, we don't really need uh, the table B3 because both Excel and R will give us our 
F critical and our F obtained scores, which we can then compare the two. And just like the, the t tests, when our uh, F obtained value is more extreme than the F critical value, then we cannot accept the null hypothesis. However, when the F obtained value is smaller or does not exceed our critical value, that means it could be equal, then the null hypothesis is the most attractive explanation. Okay, rather than um, going through the step-by-step uh, -step statistics of this, uh, and we are moving into more complex statistical formulas, I really don't see the value of, of breaking them down for you. This is not a statistics class, and for the most part, we will not be exposed to the necessity to know how to know the math behind it all at least not at the level of a master social worker. If perhaps you go on to a doctorate program, um, you, um, you may need this, but in that case, you'll probably have to take a statistics course as part of that education. Therefore, I'm just going to focus on, on how to conduct the test and interpret the results using Excel, StatPlus, and the R program. All right, here we are in Excel on a Macintosh and we want to use our StatPlus program to calculate a simple analysis of variance. Opening up StatPlus we go up to statistics and they have a whole section of analysis of variance. Now if you have the, the uh, uh, StatPlus LE model you won't have all these. What we want is one-way ANOVA unstacked. Click OK. We have some preferences. Again, we can set our alpha value. 5% is the norm. What we want to do about removing uh, missing values, we want nothing done there. <clears throat> and we want to display in regular notation two decimal points. Okay, so we we select our range, including the headers, and even though we are missing a couple of values, that plus will accommodate that and know what to do. We have our range selected. We click OK. It does its calculation and quite quickly comes up with a result. Let me zoom in a little bit here. And what we see we have here is a one-way analysis of variance. Here's my three groups, group 1, 2, and 3. Sample size of 10, sample size of 13, sample size of 13. We got our sum of squares, our means, and our variance. The important information is down here in our source of variation. So we can see that between groups our F score is 0 0.16 and that we have an F critical of 3.28. Uh, if we remember our uh, rules correctly, the F observed should exceed the F critical to be a meaningful test. In this case it does not. So we conclude that there is no difference between the groups. Also we can see that our probability level of 0.85 would indicate that there's a very good likelihood that whatever we found could have happened by chance. So we've got a pretty uh, uh, meaningless test in the sense that it tells us that there's no real difference in um, uh, group 1, group 2, and group 3 on the measure. So what we would say is between 15 and 25 hours of practice <clears throat> doesn't make much difference. So whatever we're testing here, however many hours of practice, doesn't seem to make much difference.
stat plus and um, we can see our sample sizes 10, 10, and 13, which gives us three groups, which will give us two degrees of freedom right there. We can see it. Uh, we add together all these groups. It's 36, and of course we have to take off um, one for each group, so that's going to give us 33 again. And um, And here is our F statistic, or our F obtained score. Here is our F critical score. And finally, our probability score. So using our, um, our, our rule of table is, does the F obtained score exceed the F critical? No. Therefore, we... Um, uh, reject the notion that um, there's any difference between these groups. So we accept the null hypothesis as the most attractive option, <clears throat> particularly when this F score is so much smaller than that F critical. Now we've looked at our probability score. You know, this, this, these results could have happened by chance, 0.85. So so, um, you know, perhaps, you know, a different test would have come up with uh, a critical value, but this one didn't, and it's, it's highly unlikely that it happened. I mean, it, it could have happened by chance. So it's, it's, it's really a meaningless test. Um, I mean, it's not meaningless. I mean, it tells us something that these groups aren't different. Okay, and how would we write this out? <clears throat> Well, the um, way I like to write this out, and the way you see it most commonly done in modern um, journals and textbooks, is to write the F score, and then in lowercase uh, parentheses, uh, the degrees of freedom for the uh, between groups, the degrees of freedom for the within group equals, and then you have your actual F score, your F obtained value, which is right here, F obtained. And, you, and then just to simply write out the probability level. So we've got probability equals uh, 0 0.85. Now some people will still write out the the degrees of freedom the same equals the, the the F statistic of course has to be the same same but some people still write probability in this case is greater than 0.05 um, I don't see the value of doing that when you have the actual number so <clears throat> okay the F test is what's called an omnibus test, which means that it only tells you that a uh, difference exists. Um, uh, so you have to follow it up with another type of test. Uh, of course, every time you do a test, the, uh, the risk of, um, uh, of a type 1 error increases. And... Um, with uh, some of the more advanced statistical programs, uh, they will run a test for you and compare compare the the means, uh, the differences between the groups. Okay. All right. So the analysis of variance options in the tool pack, um, <clears throat> you have three different options: either the single factor, which we're going to do today. Two-factor with replication, two-factor without replication, which we'll go into um, in the uh, next chapter. Um, so again, here's our, our data uh, from the book. You can calculate it yourself, um, and you, you go to your analysis tool pack. Uh, 
select single factor uh, dialog box <clears throat> in your input range you will click click on the the button and select your range now it can be grouped by columns or rows so be sure that one's correct and if you have labels select them and and put the X in there and then decide on where you your, want your output and then click OK. And here is your output for, for the um, example in the book. In, in the book, we've got um, uh, <clears throat> three equal groups of 10 each. So we've got uh, two degrees of freedom between groups and 27 within groups. Uh, so even though we've got... Um, um, a, a different configuration than I did in the other example, we get the same 27 down here. So, uh, no, we don't. We had 33 in the other one. Uh, excuse me. So, our F score. So, we got a, an 8.8 .8 on our F score, which exceeds our F critical value of 3.35. So our little, our little, you know, fireworks start shooting off, and we go, "Yay! We have a we have a meaningful test." And so we take our next step, and we look at our probability value, which in this case is is point zero zero, you know. So it's it's a small probability, so less than point zero zero. Uh, 0 0.001, I guess, is what we would write that down as. So again, that there's the output that's meaningful. And again, this is an omnibus test. Going back to looking at that, we can't tell where the difference lies because we we, we can see that in group number. <clears throat> One, we've got a mean score of 76. Group two, we've got a mean score of 85. And then we've got a mean score of 91 in group three. Um, so 85 is nine more than um, 76. And um, 91 is six more. So. My guess is that you know the difference is going to be between group one and group three, and that there's not a lot of there may may or may not be a significant difference between group one and two. You'd have to conduct the secondary tests to do that. All right, so on to doing this in um, analysis tool pack. All right, it's pretty straightforward. Let me pull this over here. Whoops, pulled, pull, let me pull the right one over. There we go. <laughs> okay, so here's my data again. Um, it's just made a little prettier. You don't have to make it different colors to make it work. This is just for the for the demo. Okay, data analysis tool pack for you, you Microsoft users. Go to data tab, go over to data analysis, and we and right there on the very top one is ANOVA single factor and that's what we're looking for okay we get our dialog box you see I've already done this uh, our dialog box and then you select all of your data and it forces me to select this blank data but that's no big deal it won't hurt anything selected my labels they're grouped by columns and I'm going to put my output in this in this new tab called ANOVA and then I click OK and look how quick that is so my summary here uh, gives me the counts 10 13 13 for each group the averages really close 58 
57.96, that's almost 58, and then 59.0. So there's a, a one, one count, one point difference between these two uh, in, in their averages. And they've got a fairly robust variance compared to that. So, um, <clears throat> so we've got our uh, degrees of freedom is 2, comma, 33. Our F statistics is 0.16. Our F critical is 3.28. We reject the, uh, we accept the null hypothesis. There's no difference between these groups. And our probability is 0.85 uh, of it happening. But so, so um, it's not a statistically significant um, 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 it's, it's, it's not a statistically significant uh, uh, outcome. So um, uh, you've got 85% of the time it's going to happen because of chance. All right, I'm just going to quickly also show you how to do this in R. I know some of you haven't, most of you haven't dealt with R before, <clears throat> but one of the things that R will need is to have you reformat your data. So the best way to do it is to have the scores all in one column and have the grouping variables all in another column. So it looks just like that. So what we have is two vectors. So. Then what I do is just I just take and copy it over into a into a, a notepad and then I can import it there. So you can also import directly from directly from um, <clears throat> okay, where's my where's my program at here? Hmm. Just a second. Full screen. There we go. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Okay. I'll just close all those. Okay, so... When you're first beginning to use R, you'll want to install something called R Commander. Uh, and <clears throat> that gives you a graphic user interface. After you've, If you've used it for a while, you'll just start to write command lines. So the first thing you need to do is to get this data uh, that we saw earlier into, um, uh, into R. And so we, we, we do that through uh, importing the data from a text file. We'll just leave it called data set. There's white space separating and it's on our local file system. And, um, and I called it ANOVA data earlier. And it imports it and we can take a look at it if we want. See there it is, the score and there's the group. Um, and then running a, an analysis of variance in um, R is really quite simple. We just go to means. Remember, it's a test of means, and it's a one-way, simple analysis of variance. Since we only got one grouping variable and one response variable, it kind of picks, as, picks itself. Uh, but it also gives us the, the ability to compare means. So we just click OK. <clears throat> And we can see that there's not a lot of difference between these groups just by looking at the picture. You know, these are 95% these are confidence intervals, and the means are almost all on zero. So there's not a lot of difference between the group. But our output is surprisingly similar to Excel's. So we've got two degrees of freedom for the group, three, for what they call residuals, is the, is the um, uh, within groups. Uh, 
and we have our um, f value right here of uh, of 0.6 and a probability of 0.85. Now we don't get our f uh, f critical. I thought we got an f critical. I guess we don't. Um, uh, but we can we can still go back to our 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 table of values in um, um, <clears throat> in any statistics books, including um, the one we have here for this class. Okay, so that's that is good for for now, and um, um, I'll go ahead and put up a little short integrity about getting R if you're interested.